<laughs> so, anyway, there are other sports, of course, that we could uh, talk about, like um, gambling and all that sort of thing. There was a man, he, there was a dub, and he was working in North London, in a place generally referred to as Tottenham. But being a true dub, he called it Tottenham. And apart from the fact that he couldn't pronounce Tottenham properly, he ha ha had a bit of a, a problem with the, the speech in, in any case. But he went into a branch of Joe Corrells, the bookies, in Tottenham one day, and he went up to the clerk and he said, I have a, 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 a bit of a problem with him. I'm after back in a... Oh, come on, Paddy, I don't want to listen to all this bull. Come on, come on. No, I'm after back in the... Yeah, yeah, you're back to five rate and you lost it to the docket and you want me to give you the money. Do you think I'm a bloody idiot? You, you, you mix give me a pain in the arm. No, no, I'm after back in a... Oh, it was... Was a, it was a five to one winner. A 50, why not a fifty to one winner? <laughs> yeah, oh, come on, get out now. No, no, I'm out the back. Look, get out. Just, just get out before I call a cop. Now I don't want to listen to any more of this. So he's on his way out the door, and who should he meet coming in but Joe Coral himself? And he said, Ah, me, Mr. Cartel, the, the very man. I. <sighs> I have a proper problem. I'm, I'm out the back in a f f f f paddy. I don't want to listen. Please. Do, now, don't insult my intelligence. I, I, do you mix come in here with all this bloody con job stuff and nonsense at all? No, no, I'm out the back in a f f f f f f Look, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my temper. I'm trying to be even my uh, even hand. There's a 20 pound out. Now, this is just a public relations gesture. Take the 20, go out, have a nice day, have a drink on Joe Coral, and tell everybody we treated you well. But don't let me see you inside my offices again, anywhere. So you know, and he went into the pub next door, and he threw the money in the counter, and he said, I'll have a large uh, brandy, please, and whatever you're having yourself. So the man went up two brandies, and uh, the dub raised his glass. He said, well, here's to Joe Carroll, the, the decent man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> big win, Paddy. <laughs> no, I only went in to tell him that I was after backing up a, a, a f***ing lorry into his Rolls Royce. <laughs> Couldn't happen to a nicer man. Now, this is uh, a very, very, <laughs> very odd story in a way because it concerns, again, a cabin couple, a man and woman, a married couple in cabin, a man and wife, and they were married for 20 years. So they decided to go on their honeymoon. And where did they decide to go? But well, to Belfast, which shows the state of the marriage that a trip to Belfast was considered an improvement. But anyway. They went off and they were wandering around Belfast hand in hand and they were looking at the sights and then they came on this huge hoarding with an ad for an air display and flying circus. An air display and flying circus. I wonder what that would be like. I never heard of the like of that. Did you ever hear that? No. A f air display and flying circus. And the barker came out and he said, Hello, Gov. Oh, ha, 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 you've seen the ad. What a day you have in store. What a thrill you've got in store for you. This is going to be one of the greatest moments, of mo the most exciting experiences of your entire life. For 40 pounds. A mere 40 pounds. You can have your own plane, your own pilot. You can fly up the northeast coast of this beautiful green isle. You look over to the right, you will see Scotland, the Mull of Kintyre, you know, and all that sort of thing. And you, the Isles of Skye. And you look to the left, you see the green Isle of Erin. You see the green glens of Antrim. You'll see the giant's causeway. And you can view Belfast City from the air. 40 pounds. <laughs> Forty pound for to look at Belfast from the air when I can see it from here for f all. Ah <laughs> oh, no, you want to come down on that? No, you want to come down on that? How about a favour? 
Oh, for heaven. Oh, come on. A fiver. <laughs> Get real. Do you think we got this plane for nothing? <laughs> we've, got to pay, we've got to pay for a plane. You've got to buy it. You've got to pay the pilot. You've got to pay, pay for fuel. You've got to pay for maintenance, insurance. No, oh, I don't want to go on with it. Come on. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a deal with you. Now, you look to me like a sporting man, a very sporting gentleman. So I'll make this proposition. If you take this trip, which will last about an hour, and if you do not open your mouth, and you don't utter one single syllable in the course of the trip, you can have it for nothing. Absolutely free, gratis, and for nothing. Otherwise, you pay the law. And now that's what I call a bargain. <laughs> okay, you're on. So he says, right. Get rid of this mick fairly fast. Okay, vertical takeoff. <laughs> no, no reply, no answer, no geek from behind. <laughs> no, no. So he takes it up to enormous height and <laughs> frightened. No, no. Down again. So he skims the top of the waves and he's scattering seagulls all over the place and fish and the whole. Thing. No, no. So he loops the loop a few times, he twists, he turns, he goes up, he takes an enormous height, comes down, and this time very definitely skims the top of the waves, he's killing fish and seagulls, and the whole windscreen is plastered with seagull feathers and fish guts and seagull shit and everything, most horrifying sight you ever saw, and it's a no reaction whatsoever, none whatsoever, and after an hour of this, he's absolutely exhausted, he brings the plane down, he taxis up the runway, and he says, I've got to end it, you guff. Oh, my God. I've never met anybody like you, he said. Nerves of steel. He said, didn't I frighten you at all? Didn't you feel even one little twinge of fear? He said, I have to admit, no, there was one time you nearly had me. He said, oh, when was that? When the wife fell out of the plane. LAUGHTER